Good morning everybody and welcome once again to our home and to this celebration of a traditional uh, Book of Common Prayer version uh, of the morning Eucharist. You are most welcome here. Um, I wish we could be together but once again we are separated by the Covid virus but we continue to pray for all those who are affected by it and for those who are tasked with the, the job of leading us through it as we ourselves remain faithful to Jesus' command that we should do this in remembrance of him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're going to think about the place of scripture in the task of understanding the mystery of God. We'll hear Jesus teaching us the Lord's Prayer but with some intriguingly different words from the ones that we already know or usually use. And we'll ask some questions about why that might be. But first, let's prepare ourselves to meet with God in word and in sacrament, as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory. And that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Collect of the Day. The Lord be with you and, and with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through our weakness and the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now Claire is going to come to read to us our first lesson. <coughs> the lesson is written in the 63rd chapter of the prophecy Isaiah, beginning at the 7th verse. Isaiah encourages us to see how God saves the people just to be his presence among them. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord. Because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favour to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their saviour in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them, 
he lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Here endeth the lesson. I would ask you to hold just one line from that beautiful reading in your minds as we move towards exploring it together. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. We're about to hear Jesus teach the disciples the prayer we call the Lord's Prayer. But do listen carefully because you'll find that many of the words that he uses are rather different uh, and we'll explore the reason for that a little more in the sermon. Jesus saith, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I've alerted you to the fact that there are slightly different words in this morning's Gospel to those that we're used to saying and that indeed we will say together later in this service. Um, I was referring, of course, to, to, to two lines in particular. First of all, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We're used to forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our sins in a more modern translation. And then secondly, do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. We're used to lead us not into temptation, aren't we? Now, the reason that we have competing versions of the Lord's Prayer is quite simply because the Greek scholars have never quite been able to agree precisely on what was meant by the original Greek text. It's a problem, but it's also a salutary lesson to anyone who wants to take any phrase of the Bible and treat it literally, especially once it's been translated into English or whatever other native tongue one is using. The Bible is a text that needs careful study at all times. It is not, as some suppose, a handbook from God, uh, nor a letter from the Almighty, dictated word for word from the divine lips. Instead, it is a glorious mixture of story, of myth, of prophecy, of poetry, of history, and the ancient laws of a nomadic people. Most of all, it is the record of one nation's attempt to understand something of who God is and what God is like. And along the way, they made many errors. No one today, for example, could possibly believe in a God who gives permission for one group of his children to wage war on another group of his children and to forcibly take their land from them. But that's what the writers of some of the Bible thought God was like. No one today could believe that God thought slavery was a perfectly acceptable economic system. But some of the Bible writers did. And when such writers 
thought such thoughts, they tended to imagine that God agreed with them. And so they would put words in his mouth that supported their point of view. So our task is always to approach the Bible thoughtfully and carefully. We listen to the wisdom of the scholars who understand the original languages of the Bible. And then we must weigh up their ideas against what the Holy Spirit teaches us about the truth, the actual reality of God. Now take, for example, this line from the Lord's Prayer. Do not bring us to the time of trial. Or the liturgical version, lead us not into temptation. Both of these are attempts to grapple with one word in the original Greek text. But both of them are problematic when weighed against what we know about God. They're problematic because they suggest that God himself might lead us into a time of trial or temptation. But that doesn't sound right, does it? Why would God, who loves us so much and is constantly calling us to him, and who only seeks our good, why would he actively lead us into either danger or temptation? It would be like Claire leaving a bag of sweets in the kitchen just so that she could tell me off when I help myself to them. Pope Francis has wrestled with this line. In 2017, he said this. He said, I am the one who falls into temptation. It's not God pushing me into temptation to see how far I have fallen. So as a consequence, most of the Roman Catholic world now uses a form of words that says, do not let me fall into temptation. That's a prayer for strength to resist temptation rather than a plea for God himself to stop tempting us. So it's all been a bit theological this morning. Let me try to summarise and ask this. What can we take from this? Well, I suggest that the lesson for the day is that we need to be very careful about assuming that we know anything about God at all. God is an infinite mystery, before whom we can only stand and wonder. It is the presence of God in our lives, which lifts our hearts and inspires our actions, just as it was for Isaiah in this morning's lesson. As he said in that line that I asked you just to file away, it was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In other words, it wasn't words from heaven which saved the people. It was God's actual presence among them. It is by seeking the presence of the Lord that we begin to truly understand the Lord. All our human words, all the texts of the Bible, all the hymns and, yes, even the sermons in the world can actually not teach us all the ways of the Lord. We need to do, sometimes to just let go of what we think we know and in silent adoration and awe, let the Holy Spirit teach us the ways of God. Perhaps in these continuing days of partial lockdown, perhaps today especially as the, the soft summer rains fall outside our windows and prevent us even perhaps from our morning exercises, perhaps we have no greater opportunity to lay aside the busyness of our monkey minds and just dwell in the presence of of the Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in saying the Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Please take a moment to sit in the presence of the Lord as I prepare the table. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, praying especially at this time for the new Archdeacon of Portstown, Jenny Rowley, as she commences her duties this week, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation, here present and at home, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy words, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbour, and intend to lead a new life following in the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament spiritually, to your comfort, and make your humble confession 
to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks Amen. unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so, so to do. do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat spiritually the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. 
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. In a short moment, I will receive these elements on behalf of all of you and the whole parish. But first, let us pray together the prayer of spiritual Eucharist. In union, O dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body, with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee, and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. O oh, let nothing ever separate me from thee. Let me live and die in thy love. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Together with all the angels of heaven, let us say the Gloria in excelsis. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, 
have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you once again for being with us today. I hope what I've said this morning will encourage you to perhaps just spend a little time in quietness and peace. Um, and uh, as our service finishes in a few moments, I shall ask Claire, who's my technical wizard this morning, uh, to play that um, song, Be Still, for the presence of the Lord that you heard at the beginning of the service. Um, perhaps use it as a chance just to gently and quietly Spend some time in God's presence, after you've said goodbye, of course. I know many of you are anxious to know when the church will be open. Um, let me tell you, uh, in, in addition to what I said last week in the Corona Chronicle, we are actively uh, working towards the weekend of the, the 5th of July, so two Sundays from now. Um, we still have many uh, obstacles to overcome and we still want to make sure that the recent uh, release of the lockdown on um, non-essential shops doesn't have a, 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 a bad impact on the infection rate. We also have the challenge that the government tells us we can't ask our uh, volunteers over the age of 70 to come and help uh, with staffing because those of you in that age bracket are more susceptible to the virus so it would be unfair for us to do so. So we're still balancing challenges, uh, but also the opportunity to be back in the church as soon as we safely can. Uh, and finally, I just want to uh, let you know that, of course, with the government's furlough scheme uh, coming to uh, an end in its full sense at the end of this month, uh, we aim to start bringing some of our staff back to work uh, on a part time basis initially. Uh, uh, not least in places like the charity shop and uh, our general manager, buildings manage, uh, management, uh, and Sandra, of course. Um, uh, to do that is going to cost us funds. So I encourage you, please, to keep on donating, as so many of you have been, uh, so that we can continue supporting our staff as they support us with their ministries. So thank you in advance for those of you who are able to give we are most grateful to you. So now let's pray for God's peace and his blessing as we uh, continue to serve him in our different ways, serving him from our homes, serving him by calling one another and keeping each other going, serving him by praying for one another, the parish and the world. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go, or indeed stay, in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.